today is day 200 and ooh. little kitty what day is it 218 today is 218 of the year of streaming and learning to code we are continuing on here at free code camp isn't that right little one it most certainly is how are you doing this evening furry confused potentially lost no 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 don't change the screen resolution oh my god how did you get into system preferences with three toes on the keyboard oh jesus where the hell did everything go oh my god little cat you're just the destroyer of worlds you're still stepping on things it never ends okay hey tiny cat we have Yet again, limited time to stream. No, please watch your toes. I'm trying to touch the keyboard. Oh my god, just, it doesn't matter. She doesn't exist. She doesn't exist. It's okay. Will you, look at this, look at this. Try not to knock over the webcam. Bless you. Oh my god, we're like 48 seconds into the stream and everything's falling apart. Will you stop opening system preferences? I swear to god. <sighs> We can't even take a deep breath because our nose is all plugged up because of allergies. There's rampant sneezing in this room and fur and... Hey, Topher. Hey, Topher. How are you doing this evening? Ah, we're, we're just really struggling trying to come to terms with getting... Oh my god, this is the ninth lap you've done past the webcam, furry cat. Just, just chill. Just chill. Assume the napping position. Be happy. Be over there. Oh my god. Okay. Let's double check. Somehow she opened... <sighs> Somehow she opened system preferences. We're, we're going back into OBS. I think everything's fine. Mic audio, check. Golden webcam. Awesome. We've got chat on the phone. Topher, maybe you're allergic to cats. Yeah, no, definitely. Doesn't help that there's three in the household. <sighs> all right. What were we doing? We were checking every, all systems are go, all systems are good. We've got free code camp ahead of us. Fingers crossed, this will be a short stream. Let's do this. We have something about something. Totally drawn a, drawn a blank. It's not truncating a string. They always jump ahead to the next one repeat a string and i like their title see because it repeats itself repeat a string repeat a string get it see play on words good times uh what do we have from the top repeat a given string first argument num times second argument whoa 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 string why didn't they have string eh, okay string is the first argument num times is the second return an empty space string if num is not a positive number hmm remember to use read search ask if you get stuck write your own code here's some helpful links a global string object all right i we might be able to actually solve this in about the desired 20-ish minute stream time so global stuff Global string object is a constructor for strings or a sequence of characters. Yeah, that's just a generic string. Nothing special. Cool. Long literal string. I see let now. I know it's the newest version. Which allows more flexibility in your code than the traditional uh, var for variable let adds additional stuff the specifics i'm drawing a blank but i know it it does it's beneficial if one were to implement let into their code over variable uh, of course there's a time and a place for everything but that's now we don't cower in fear when we see let and confusion yeah pretty cool uh do, 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 okay so string stuff yeah, yeah, good. Variable A, B, if A is less than B, for some reason that's true in their eyes, I guess alphabetically maybe. 
or if it's true, a is less than b, else a is greater than b. <laughs> I'm not sure what would happen in that scenario. All right, well, let's see what exactly they're hoping for. Function, repeat string number of times. Oh, okay, they're going to repeat the string, but if it's a negative number, don't do anything, right? Return an empty string if positive. Okay. Uh, Topher Gates, you could use the repeat method or a loop. Well, let's try the repeat method. And I feel like they may have gone over the repeat method in there. No, did they not? Private map reduce filter. I know they covered repeat. I am certain of it. I don't think it was a large section. I think it was only one. Item challenge pushing shift on shift. There was popping involved. I know we should just check MDN anyways. We'll get there. Nesting crap? No, no, no. Bad, Steven. All right. Well, gut reaction before. Okay, string, repeat. Oh, just like that? That's straightforward? Topher's always got us covered. String dot repeat slash num. Well, we saw that. However, my concern is the negative number thing. Or is it negative number? Or if it was an empty something? Yeah, if it's not positive. I feel like that's the crux of it. And we should probably just do return string, blah, blah, blah. Cut. And run it. Da ha! See? There we go. So, therein lies the problem. Beautiful. But, but, this provides opportunity to learn. Let's find out. JavaScript, MDN, uh, repeat. The repeat method constructs and returns a new string which contains a specified number of copies on which it is called concatenated together. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes, yes. Very straightforward. Good. Now, the bigger issue. An integer between zero and positive infinity indicating the number of times something is newly created. A new string containing so range error. Maybe in if statement? No, 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 that's not right. Maybe an if statement. Hey, they've got an if statement here. But I think that's more of coincidence positive count. Is that what that is? Count equals zero. I kind of feel like this might be s very, very similar. Repeat count must not be negative. I feel like I'm staring at the answer. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, what's going on? Topher, if num is less than one, return empty string, or num is less than zero. If it's less than one, or if it's less than zero. Okay, so it is an if loop. So my, my guess was kind of correct, almost similar to this. Hey, very similar to that. If count is less than zero, Let's go with that, because it's, it's right there. If count is less than zero, 
be da dee dee ba da da die lie da die die da do 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 hmm if string wait 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 oh oh bad Steven bad Steven not both pick one so wait if is not a loop right if statement doesn't loop through. It's just checking the condition. Can hold on. Mm. Does this mean we'll see? They've got their dot repeat stuff. Maybe. Or not. No, I'm missing something. Hold on, polyfill. This method has been added to the ECMAScript 2015 specification and may not be available in all JavaScript implementations. However, you can polyfill string.prototype.repeat with the following snippets. If blah, 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 function count... Damn. Well, all right. So let me get rid of this for now. We'll, we'll get there. Uh, if number is less than one or zero, we'll do zero. If it's less than zero, Can I do this? Copy? No, no, no. If it's, if it's return an empty string, return blank. That? Yeah. If num is less than zero, return blank. Otherwise, return that. Whew. Okay. Okay, good. Out of sight. Whew. I feel like that could have gotten very ugly very quickly. Uh, if's not a loop, uh, don't overcomplicate this. Just check. If number is a positive number or not. Yeah, good. Like that. Like that. No else statement needed. Is there a... I'm sure there's a prettier way of doing this. I think it's relatively okay for now. <coughs> it said I passed. I don't know if I should believe them. We lived. There were no tears. It didn't take an hour and 45 minutes just to check if the number was positive. That counts as a win in my book. Mostly. What about truncating a string? Eh? Should we try for a second one? We should try for a second one. It's only been a brief... brief moment. It hasn't even been 20 minutes yet. Let's, let's push through. Let's try to get two done. Truncate a string. Truncate a string. First argument. String. Similar song and dance. <laughs> if it's longer than the given maximum string length, second argument, num, return the truncated string with an ellipses ending. This is kind of like the preview on your emails. The thumbnail, you know, it shows like the first half the first sentence, like the first, I don't know, 10, 15 words, and then dot, dot, dot. Or if your username's too long in something, or, oh, well, it's not doing it up here in the uh, the tabs above, but ideally it could slash should be doing that. So, let's see. Truncate a string, first argument, if it's longer than the given maximum string length, second argument. 
return the truncated string with dot 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 ending. Note that inserting three dots to the end will not add to the string length. However, if the given maximum string length num is less than or equal to three, then the addition of the three dots does not add. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We'll have to reread that one. However, if the given maximum string length number is less than three, is less than or equal to three, so one, two, or three, then the addition of the three dots does not add to the string length in determining the truncated string. Okay. So never... Wait, note that inserting the three dots to the end will add. Ah, it's only if it's less than three that it doesn't matter. If it's more than three or above the maximum length, it, it adds to it. We're fine, we're fine, we're fine. We're already overcomplicating. We haven't even made it through this. Remember to use read, search, ask. Oh, we get to slice again. Hell yeah. Time to get slicey. Function, truncate string, we're going to go with something very similar to the last one. So, a tisk, a task, a green and yellow basket, 11. So, 0 would be A, the next following 10-ish or so, uh, and it would return dot 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 from there. Ah. A tisk with three, right from tisk. Peter Piper, dot, dot, dot. Cool. This should be a freakishly similar thing, but this time with slice. Slice method extracts a section of a string and returns it as a new string. We were dealing with slice yesterday. We were doing, what were we doing just the other day ago? Was it yesterday's string? I think it was. Return. No, it was, con yeah, it was confirm the ending. Watch this. Uh, it was string ending. Where else did we use slice? Good God. Oh, we use slice at Code Wars for something. Yes, screw that noise. Oh, and title case, I think, used slice. Didn't we? Yeah, see? Slice stuff. All right, let's, let's, let's get back to the task at hand. Truncating string. Here we go. Uh, we are taking, truncate the first string, if it's longer than the given maximum. So if string dot length is greater than num, do the following, right? return return hmm return the string dot return the string dot slice from the beginning no no something's wrong something's wrong Well, from the beginning to num minus three. I don't know why I'm seeing it that way in my head, but I'd kind of like to see that and then truncate from string 
dot don't mind that's the alarm to call it quits but I just string dot slice I'm not sure if this is right but this is just how I see it in my head after doing the last couple of activities is num minus three but I do something with it I somehow I need to add the three dots with this plus something there you know we're cramming it in it's not a pretty process but let's see what the dots have to recommend map stuff it was title case right new open the link in new tab what did we do value slice one no 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 it was continuing on from there we want to add we want to add something we want to put in the three dots we want to concatenate the ellipses from that third Spot. Is it another if statement? If string length, let's say it's 18, and the maximum characters it can have is 9, the ellipses takes up 3 spots. So we'd want to return the string dot slice from the beginning, zero, to whatever the final limit is, nine minus three spaces, so that would be spit, uh, six, and then we want to add, oh, I guess we would just add from there. From there, we would just add exactly that. Uh, we would add... the ellipses but if it wasn't that else if it's less than three something happens if however if the given maximum if number is less than three If it's less than or equal to three, then the addition of the three dots does not add to the string length in determining the truncated string. That, I'm going to screw it up with that bit right there. What do we get if we run this for now? Let's do run. See, we've got some green. That's cool. Truncated, test task, blah, 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 test task, blah, blah, blah. Dot length. Length plus two. A. just two it should return a b blah 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 else damn else we're right there. Don't lose it. Topher said, don't overcomplicate things. Just simply find out what's needed. 
else. If the given maximum string length number num is less than or equal to three. See, I feel like that's an else if thing, a secondary conditional thing. Else if But I don't know what the third outcome in this scenario is. If it's that, blah, blah, blah. Well, let's write it out anyways. Else if... The only other thing I can think of is set up a variable with an if statement and then return return that variable in the else and it will run through the if statement as the variable but that feels kind of excessive else if blah 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 if num is greater than or equal to three. It does not add to the string length Note that inserting three dots to the end will add to the string length inserting three dots will add to the string length. However, if the given maximum length number is less than or equal to three, like this, if it's less than or equal to three, then the addition of the three dots does not add to the string length in determining the truncated string. So if num is less than or equal to three, all we do is return, return to So we're just slicing from the number. If it says two, if it said one, we slice from zero comma num, which would be one. If it says two, we slice from zero comma num. We don't have to do this subtraction stuff. So it's a, the simplified form of this. Copy. Semicolons there. Paste here. <sighs> Return nums from zero to the slice plus the three. All right, I can live with that. The thing that I'm struggling with though is the fact that there's no else statement. I feel like that's weird, that there's no else, but I don't know what the hell we would be returning if there was an else statement. Let's run it. Yeah, they're pissed. Of course they're pissed. Why wouldn't they be? Hmm. Else... Return string, I guess, string dot length, string, 
return string. Oh, we got more. We got more. Length plus two. That's weird. Something is off in the universe, and it's my fault yet again. If number is less than three, string slice from zero to whatever number they give. It would only be zero, one, two, or three. And concatenate an ellipses onto it. Hmm. Mega death. D D D D D D D La da da D D D D D D D D D D D D La da da D D D D This is actually taken to the specific forum page regarding this particular problem. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. Truncating stuff and such. JS We are looking for truncating a string. Oh god, oh god, everything's highlighted and we're clicking. Of course it is. Okay, we are looking for... Hold on, there's an issue with my phone and stuff. There we go, that's better. Okay. Truncating nonsense. We are so close. So very, very close. It has to do with the last bit. That's correct. Else is not needed. I need a better way of implementing these two scenarios without dealing with with an if else if else statement truncating what did we find like to truncate a dynamically loaded string using javascript blah 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 path name foo and stuff variable length three my string substrings or slicing well that's substring different beast but we, we did substring yesterday. Yeah, no, not really our style. String and limit. Trimmable nonsense. Uh, regular expressions, of course. String dot split. Word count. Filtering. God, that's an ugly. Ugly answer. I mean, I'm sure it works, but isn't there something a little more straightforward, sleek? Something that's closer to travel size. My task is to truncate a string, first argument. Yeah, okay, this is basically exactly what we're up against. Aha! Look at this. Look at that. Returning something else. 
return this is not a string. If number is less than or equal to three, number greater than string length. Oh, is that what's wrong? Is it if number is greater than string length, it should be that? I didn't think that was right. This is not a string is the correct answer. Why should it be? So basically what you need to change is the greater than to in your first if. Ah, ha! I knew they were confused. Final code you want to have is string.append is not a function. I can live with that. So if string length is greater than the number, the limit, you'd have string length slice at num. Really? It would start from there. That seems wrong. Return string plus blah blah blah. Else if number is less than or equal to three. String dot slice again, it should be num in my opinion. String plus blank, else return that. Change your conditions. Agreed. Yeah, zero comma num. That's where it's at. Okay, all of these don't have a lot of... Everyone seems to be confused. How can everyone be more confused than me? That doesn't seem humanly possible. Here is my solution. Yes, good, good. What was your solution, good sir? Else, return string slice. Zero. Start at zero. Oh, he just... He shoved his whole... What is it? Ternary? A ternary if-else statement? Right in there? Is that what he did? Number is greater than three. If it's greater than three, number minus three, else number, and concatenate. Fascinating. Hmm. I mean, I suppose that works, but kind of odd. I feel like mine already covers that, though, with the first bit. If string length, that's the difference. That's what I'm not accounting for, is if string length is less than the number. My bad. If string length is less than the number, you know what the other thing is how they are accounting for it. And I think that's what was confusing me too. Note that inserting the three dots to the end will add to the string length. It's almost like they want us to have the string and the concatenation, and then figure out where the number length is. If that makes sense. I mean, I think it's already fine as is for this first section. Oh, I'm for sure overcomplicating this. Damn! Inserting the three dots will add to the string length. How it works if if number is less than equal to string length and greater than that whoa, whoa, whoa I can put another if statement inside the else Bullshit. That doesn't work. That can't be a thing. There's no way in hell that's a thing. Is that a really a thing? <laughs> You're telling me I could shove this inside of else and no one would be upset.
That doesn't look hilarious to anyone. Why don't I believe them? Looks weird to me. Let's do... Yeah, that just, that seems full of terrible. See, see, we lost our other ones. We lost those. Pretty sure it's not this. That just seems terrible. What? What, 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 what? So hold on, hold on. Okay. I swear to God. <sighs> so, this, when string length is greater than the number limit, and it does this, and we run it, we get our first two. When we have... Our return string it satisfies the middle two. That's for when number is I guess greater than the length. There's this weird in between them in between option that we haven't captured apparently. So that's the middle two is the else statement. And now we've got this guy as well. And when we run that, we get the bottom two. Why does everything feel wrong and terrible all the time? infinite confusion. That's what we're dealing with. That is exactly what we are dealing with. Okay, so we can piece this nightmare out. Hold on. Uh, we need one if, which is the first. That's the beginning. This also, the same song and dance. Copy. Um, God, how do we break this up? There is no pretty way to do this. That gives us the end. But I'm trying to think on what we should, or how we should set up the last bit copy. What if we do that? So... If else if and else won't work because we can't give it a condition, but work with me here, all right. If string length, what did they want? Truncate a string, first argument. If it's longer, if string length is longer than the given maximum string length, so if string length is greater than that, return the truncated string. If it's greater than, not greater than or equal to, but just greater than. If it's greater than that, do this, do that. Note that inserting three dots to the end of a string will add to its length. I think that's where this is coming in. The length plus two. Truncating a string 
if you were to do that and add three dots to it, but there's no reason to add the ellipses to it. Length plus two, they're just providing extra buffer area for that. Should return the whole thing, no ellipses. And that's fine. I don't see why there should be. That's just returning the string. Which would be the last one. If it's if string length is greater than that, do whatever. If string length is less than three, it should do this. What was the next bit? However, if the given maximum for the string length number is less than or equal to three, if number is less than or equal to three, then the addition of three dots does not add to the string length in determining this truncated string. I, I think we added it correctly. Maybe we're wrong, but this is what I see when I hear that. This is awful. Uh, less than. Let's just try running it. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? If string length is greater than that, else string length this, otherwise, maybe this should be our else statement right here. I think that's our issue. I think that should be our else statement. Yeah, definitely. Maybe a switch statement? Could be a switch statement. I feel like we need to have an else to close out that nightmare. We do. We do. Of course we do. Why wouldn't we? Uh, let's simply steal this. Copy paste it down here. We'll just turn it into a regular else statement. We'll get rid of the condition. Otherwise, return that. This will simply be commented out in the meantime for convenience in case we need to add it back into the mix. We have our if statement. We're skipping that, which has been retrofitted to be our else. We keep our else if which I have a feeling isn't properly set up, but to the hell with it. To the hell? To hell with it. Bastards, and it didn't do a damn thing. Um. Else. Hold on, hold on. Z. Command Z. Uh, since this didn't do anything special, let's do... Turn string and get rid of that, and, or bring that back to life. Get rid of this. <sighs> Son of a typical, typical. Why doesn't it like that? Before, that was working fine. This is essentially the same thing as that. When we run it, those bastards, why doesn't it like that now? Now I've lost all hope. We're doomed. Doomed, I tell you. We'll try this guy's answer. That is what we had before. 
Let's get rid of those and these. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, no, not the king of the world. Hashtag no. So inside slice. That's really where all of this is coming to life. If string length is less than or equal to number, return the string. Okay. If it's less than or equal to the number, return the string. Else, return string, always slice from zero, but if the number is greater than three, return number minus three, and if it's not greater than three, Cut from that number and add on to it. That's what's happening. I want to extrapolate that. If string length is less than number, that's what I have here. But they've got less than or equal to. And originally, I had greater than. So greater than, we can clear all of this noise. Well, let's keep the last one. Okay, cool. Let's get rid of that. So this is what I've got greater than because that's what they're telling us if it's greater than we're going to deal with this and we've got our ternary statement but visually i just want to blow that up for scale so that would be else and this part the number less than or equal to three, that is coming in to play here in the ternary statement. So let's get rid of that. So we still do return string slice. We're cutting at zero. We have our num, but what would I want to do? You know what? ternary statement I think is necessary. I wanted to blow it up. Hey, uh, Matt Gaming, welcome. How are you doing this evening, Matt Gaming? Good to have you. Yo, how are things going? Can I read the problem? The problem, fairly straightforward. Truncate a string, first argument. String. If it's longer than the given maximum string length, the limit of the string length would be num, return the truncated string with an ellipses on the ending. So, a tisk, a task, a green and yellow basket, its limit is 11 characters, so down here should return simply a tisk ellipses. Ta-da! That would be the 11 characters uh, with the three dots of the ellipses included. So, we we had our answer conceptually we had it fully written out with if else uh in full if else uh if 
else if else glory, but that wasn't quite right, and it's needed, it seems, to have a ternary if else statement. Uh, that way it can be crammed into the second parameter of the slice method. What I wanted to do from here was blow it up for scale inside the else I wanted to have basically a second if statement, but I don't think I can do a second if statement within else without getting strange looks from the neighbors. Yeah, so I think we in the end we may end up just sticking with this. So yeah, we've been chipping at, away at it for a while, and we did pass. We were able to pass everything with that, and clearly this is the nicer, prettier answer, but just visually, I kind of wanted to blow it up step by step for scale. Um, but when this all falls apart, we still have our, our go-to answer. Uh, Mad Gaming, you're overcomplicating the problem, it looks like. Absolutely. It's awful. It's our go-to issue. <sighs> 218 days of overcom overcomplicating everything. It's just... It's our downside, really. Superpower? Not sure whether to be proud of it or concerned. Means we get to spend a lot of times sucking on all the problems that come our way, though. So, you know, we become intimately familiar with all the downfalls of the problem and ourselves. Yeah. Learning opportunity. It's terrible. Good times, though. Kind of. Hopefully. What were we doing? If else, there's no need to overcomplicate this. Matt was right. Topher was right. Everyone said don't overcomplicate it, but here we are. Making a mess. What was it? It was if number is less than 3. Then, ta-da, return, well, technically, return number minus 3. See, it covers both. That's the beauty of this one. No, no, no. We're we're good. We're good. We're good. Let's let's just clear. We'll clear that out. Let's live with our, our nice clean answer. We've got our if statement, our truncated string. Truncate string, taking our parameter, whatever the string is, Peter Piper picked a, pi whoa, 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 Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, huh. 14, return Peter Piper with an ellipses. We're throwing in our string, we have our limit, if the string length is less than or equal to the limit. If it fits inside the limit, just return the string. Else, we will be returning the string, and we're going to use slice. We will start cutting from zero, which would start at the first character, A for a tisk, or P in Peter for that guy, and so forth from the beginning. And then where it stops cutting, we're using a ternary if-else statement. So we've got number greater than 3. If number is greater than 3, then we're going to go with the limit and subtract 3. And then from there, concatenate on to uh, concatenate an ellipses. So it's taking whatever the limit is, I think it was 14, cutting back 3, and throwing on the ellipses. Otherwise, uh, if number is greater than 3, do that. If it's not, simply return the number, like these lower ones, 1, and it stops cutting at 1, which would be that guy, and then we're simply concatenating that. It's good, it works, 
It's a nice, healthy answer. We simply commented out the noise they had in there below. We'll run it. King of the world, wrong. King of confusion. Uh, what's going down in chat? Uh, do 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 do. Overcomplicating the problem. It looks like yeah, no, I I was. It was bad for a long time. The first like twenty five minutes of this nightmare was just awful. Uh, I come in and just watch and not speak sometimes, and it seems like you don't understand the methods completely. Definitely. Very true. Lots of confusion. Lots of uncertainty. Your best option is to read up on all the methods and understand them completely using the MDN docs. Yeah, we, we went through a smattering of the different uh, MDN docs tonight in efforts to try and assist. We ended up using uh, repeat um, on the last, last case challenge item we did. It was, uh, well, repeating a string. So that was good. That was good. Uh, using the MDN docs, can't you, uh, can't you do slice string zero num minus three, then just add that? We did have that. I had that earlier. I had, more accurately... Uh, do to do to do, do, do. What was it? Uh, can you do zero, comma, num minus three? Yeah, I, I had that originally. Um, then add, then concatenate the ellipses, or you can push something to an array number minus three times, then make it back into a string. That was for the first part, at least. Your code looks good for this problem. Yeah, no, it's, it's fine now. It was far uglier earlier um but at one point yes we did have uh where'd it go well it was the the blown up version of this the non-ternary form the traditional if else version of this all spelled out anywho good times we made it through what is on the horizon for tomorrow submit and go forth We have Chunky Monkey on the horizon. Sounds messy. But that will be the beginning of day two. What's tomorrow? Tomorrow will be day 219. Uh, something that my professor in college... Uh, at Mac Gaming. Something, my pro something that my professor in college always told me was to think like a computer. Read the problem completely. Pseudocode it out. Describe it in words. Exactly what you need to do. Then you can start with the code. Yeah, uh, we've had... Uh, who's been on the stream or in the chat for the last couple days? Sultanus. He's been swinging by on occasion quite frequently lately. And yeah, we've been breaking down all my, my dire moments of confusion into uh, words, individual steps in plain English first to really get a grasp on what the hell I need to do and then converting everything to code. That's helped quite a bit, actually, in the last couple days. Uh, Mac Gaming, most people I work with do this in production. You have to understand the problem, then work out the problem in words and steps. He's right. I agree. It's been rather helpful, especially for some of the more we'll call it confusing problems that we've encountered as we do go further down the path, both here at Free Code Camp and especially at Code Wars. Oh my god. It's like every new Kata is a world of hurt at Code Wars. Holy hell. Um, so it's definitely been very beneficial doing that, breaking it down piece by piece in, in human words before trying to tackle it. Uh, there, so yeah, good times though, good, good times. Uh, he's right. That's exactly how you do it in production. It's literally no different. Oh yeah, Code Wars. Uh, Code Wars isn't the greatest. Some of the problems are really bad. Fortunately, that's well, some of them are. However, I've only really come across one that I really struggled with. I mean, I've struggled with all of them, but that was due to Steven issues, not um, Code War issues. But the ones I've been doing, oddly enough, 
because I found it to be an interesting way to filter through. I was trying to find a, a clever route to filter through on which ones would be good to tackle because I'm trying to go down the same path. I don't want to be coming and doing the most popular ones and then most positive feedback because positive feedback you can have one where 12 people have done it and they all give 100% versus you could have one where there's 5,000 people who have done it and 4,500 people have given positive feedback. So like there's a huge disparity with a lot of those. So I've been doing most completed four, takes a while to load. Uh, the other ones, easiest isn't a good one to go with either because it could be easy because it was written well the instructions which is a good thing or i don't know there's just a lot of room to mess up and then hardest doesn't necessarily mean that it was difficult could have been crappily written so i figured most completed was the best kind of sound filter to go with our current level and then loading 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 do to do to do and then fundamentals because, well, frankly, we're still on the learning curve. So we've been doing those three every single time, and it's progressed our difficulty. I think our next Kata that we complete will push us into level six, so that'll be our new one. And then we're just chipping down the list of most completed, which does mean they're getting lower into the less completed. But uh, I, I, I trust... 2,700 people who gave it 87%, you know, and the total number of times it's been done 18,000 times, basically, I can live with those odds. So we've just been consistently doing that. We're able to filter through the noise consistently. That's the important part. Let's close out of this good, tiny, crazy person rant right there as we wrap up. We've got Chunky Monkey on the horizon, possibly Code Wars, and uh, for tomorrow, because I think we're going to break through level 7 into level 6. That'll be cool. Matt Gaming, uh, next Code Wars, yes. Well, not tonight. Tomorrow we'll have Code Wars. Uh, Matt Gaming, yeah, do more Code Camp ones. They're pretty good, definitely. I've, I've enjoyed I was surprised to see these are definitely... I was trying to categorize them because a lot of them, I forget where I saw the reference, but I was trying to figure out what the hell to call all their normal things. I think they refer to them as items versus they have projects which are done at CodePen or via CodePen, and then you submit a link. But these, the algorithm scripting, these seem like challenges. So it seems like they've got three types of We'll call it activities here at Free Code Camp. Uh, items to go down the list to just learn crap, which would be the majority of the 241 items I've completed. But of those, there's the handful of projects, which would be done at CodePen, and then currently these changes and these challenges at Free Code Camp have proven to be worthy adver adversaries nonetheless. But their projects have been fun, too. We did our tribute page to Day 9 and uh, made our crappy portfolio. That was tragic. But yeah, so far, 218 days down. It's been awesome. All right. Uh, do, 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 I want to see... Uh, Matt Gaming, I want to see how you work out problems in general, like now or just in general in the future. We are about to end the stream. You're going to call it quits. Although I suppose we could look at this one. I'm not against... I'm not against trying to tackle Chunky Monkey. What does Chunky Monkey entail? We'll give it a go. Write a function that split Chunky Monkey. Okay, Matt Gaming, we'll, we'll go through it. We will do Chunky Monkey. Okay, from the top, day 218, a last, last hurrah as we push through. All right, bonus round. Write a function that splits an array, the first argument, argmatey, 
into groups the length of size second and returns them as a two-dimensional array. Fascinating. So it's going to take our current array and then split it into two subarrays. Now I wonder if they adhere to that once more. Write a function that splits an array, the first argument, into groups the length of the size. See, that's what I was curious about. So if it was three, I feel like each subarray would have three. The fact that it's two, I feel like it wants it to be split in two groups. Obviously, since there's four, two has to mean equal halves. If there was 18 of them and it said two, that means there would be nine. But if it were to split it into three... I guess the length doesn't matter from there. As long as it's three equal pieces, how does that work? What if there aren't three equal pieces? Split it into three, two groups of three. See, I don't like that. I would have tried to return three groups of two. Into, write a function that splits an array... So let's write it out. So we've got ABC into groups the length of size. It's this particular phrase right there. Splits the array, first argument, into groups the length of size. So I feel like they're telling me the length of the subarray, the groups that we're breaking them into, that the subarrays should be that long. So it should be broken up. Oh, okay, yeah, the subarray should be that long. So that does make sense. So I was just crazy. So instead of three groups, so they do want three pieces in each. And if they've got six, okay, two groups, and each, one, each group is only two long. Gotcha. Oh, no, but four. One has four, the other doesn't. <laughs> All right, so we've got a better understanding, but now we need to break it down bit by bit. Right, so you make A, B, C, D into... Uh, Mac gaming, right? So you make A B C D into A B C D noted. We can use push and slice. Let's go ahead and open those as they lead us to MDN. How kind of them! Ta da! B D D D D. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. Now, with that said. Let's take this. We will want to take array, write a function, splits an array into groups. Death. Hmm. My gut reaction is to lay down, I guess, like a skeleton of crappy code first, just so I can help visualize it. But I guess I should write it out in English first. But it's hard to think of the English terms without looking at code as well. So I think that's why I do the crappy structure. I realize it's kind of like a first draft of an essay or an outline of it. That's kind of my go-to thing. And I know they have splits here, but I don't think there's a need to use the dot split array as everything here is push and slice. Uh, Mac Gaming, A, B, C, A... B, C, D into A, B, C, D. Use a for loop to slice. Noted. For. 
variable i equals zero semicolon the variable no no for i less than the array dot length i plus plus okay groups of two although i think this is already probably wrong Def usually my for loops are based off length and going through each one individually but we'll find out split the array into groups so i'd be slicing them so array dot slice uh mm, i array dot slice I to size seems kind of weird. Looks weird, right? I to two. And then I feel like I'd want to push it into something new. I also feel like I should have variables up here. Death. Because I think I'd need to push it to something like a uh, subarray. You know, would be stuff. Also, gut reaction. Four blank blank blank. And then subarray. No, wrong. Dot push. Something kind of like that. This guy, I, I don't know what the return noise is just. We'll leave him out. It'd probably be end up being either return subarray or return array and then shoving something inside someone else. It gets messy, but we'll get there. That's that's kind of what I'm thinking of. Um, so, Matt Gaming, quite a few comments. So, use a for loop to slice. So, you want array dot slice i i plus two or something to that effect uh or something like that i don't know well actually it wouldn't be i and size because then it would start at i every time i believe you are definitely right uh test the limit hey yo yes welcome test the limit how are you doing matt gaming is guiding us on our, our journey through the chunky monkey activity so let's get rid of the i uh don't mind me i am going to run this noise really quick let's get rid of that yeah yeah look at that frustration right across the board but i plus d run Confusion. Mostly my fault, I'd assume. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's get... Let's do... Copy. I probably shouldn't be pushing stuff to subarray yet. Yeah, look at that. That's interesting. Huh. Now, what was it with size? 
Fascinating. Fascinating. Okay. Um, yeah, see, I figured it was the an issue with the condition stuff. So, Mac Gaming, instead of I++, maybe it's I plus size. So, then change I changes as size goes and start variable I equals 1. Clever fix. Clever fix, Sir Matthew. Un... Start at 1, I plus size, yeah, look at that, good times, way cool, um, so that's with size, I'm sure it should be like I plus 1 or something like that, but we're running it, yeah, air, potential infinite loop at line 7, like p potential infinite loop at your mom, <laughs> Take that free code camp. Uh, what are we looking for? I plus something. I plus size, was it? Or I plus do? No, I guess I it could be I plus size. Maybe it's I plus size there. Yeah, yeah, there's lots of confusion. Good times, good times. Should I be pushing this early on? Should I be doing something else? Should there be like an if going on? Perhaps... Maybe. Uh, boo -doo 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 -doo. So, instead of I++, maybe it's I plus size. Uh, no if statement. Good to know. Good to know. Instead of I++, maybe it's I plus size. So then change I as size goes and start variable I equals 1. Then it starts at 3 because i plus size equals 3. What does array slice return? Let's find out. Return. Should I get rid of the push? I should get rid of the push. Hmm. Well... Array, slice, yeah, get rid of push. Okay. And uh, it should return an array of the sliced items. Run test. Did I destroy something? Pretty sure I broke something. Ah, console log it. Right. B d d d d d d d. Lie di 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 di. D d d d d do 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 do. Or or. Um. Or stick array slice into a variable, then console log the variable. We can do that too. We can variable. We can make this sub array equals blankety blank. Console log. Sub array. Dun dun dun. Dun 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 I broke something. No. Console log should be above. 
Uh, just do variable new array equals array dot slice. Fair enough. Fair enough. New. Variable new array equals ray dot slice. No, no, no. <laughs> All right, hold on, don't mind me, tiny crisis, if you will. All right, tiny crisis averted. Good, good, good. D d d d d d d. Die 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 die. Okay. Uh, what was happening? Uh, new array equals array. No, no, no. Never mind. Uh, just half the way you had it before. Subarray equals array slice. Blah 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 blah. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, why is it giving you that infinite loop error? Probably because it hates me. There's an issue, oddly enough, at line 9, which is super weird because there's nothing on line 9. Slightly concerning. Uh, do 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 Close this. Or destroy that. It has to do with the current, I think, for loop, quite possibly. And return subarray. Da-da! Be-da-da-dee-boo-boo-doo. Running that noise. Let's do size. Run it. And we'll set it back to I++. Good, good. I plus size. Uh, Mac Gaming, it's I plus size. They are both I plus size, I believe. All right, fair enough, fair enough. I plus size for variable I equals 1. So it's starting at 1. I equals array length. I plus size. So that's 1 plus whatever the size is. Subarray equals array slice I plus size. Run. Error. What if we set it back to 0? Because it needs to be at the beginning of the array, right? At least I feel like it should be at the beginning of the array. If it were one, it'd be a B. So I plus size. What's going down, Mac Gaming? Uh, do 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 do. I plus size will then be three. Wait, wait, wait oh, uh, there were more comments. Uh, 
sorry, start the variable i equals 0. I forgot we're dealing with an array. So we'll start slicing at index 0, then go up all the way to i plus size, which is 2. Then i plus size will be 3. So it starts at 3 and goes to 4. Sorry, starts at 2, goes to 4. Does that make sense? It most certainly does. So leave it at 0. i plus size... Ray dot length, and it goes up. From there, it loads i. You know what? Does it start at i plus size? I feel like I should add the push back as well. the subarray dot push could be crazy but it seems like a thing that could be done don't mind me don't mind me it's definitely not that so hold on why it liked functioning this way. So what need from here it's cutting at zero. It's slicing with whatever the hell size is. So if we do i plus size here, just to visualize, it does that a, b, b, c, c, d, and then d. But that's crazy talk, because we don't want that. What we're looking for is freakishly similar, and maybe... It starts at zero, goes through length, I can't figure it out for the life of me, I plus size. We are freakishly close, I know that much. Uh, do 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 do. Why does it not let you do i plus size? Hmm. You need it not to be i plus plus because that's just setting the index up one. You need to add whatever the size is. I agree. So let's do i plus size once more. In my mind, I think that's right. See, so let's figure out. Okay, so air, we'll zoom in. Potential infinite loop at line 7. To disable loop protection, write no protect as the first line. Beware that if you do have an infinite... Ah, see, that was the other thing. The potential infinite loop, which means it doesn't necessarily mean there isn't one. I didn't notice their small print of no protect, but that's, so that's handy. As the first line, beware that if you do have an infinite loop in your code, this will crash your browser. Hashtag thug life. We're going to live dangerously. No protection. That's right. Taking off all of our gear. And then going in to face the final boss. That's what's going down. With our tree branch. And no shield. That's a Breath of the Wild reference for anyone who's who's played Legend of Zelda Breath. Breath of the Wild. We cannot speak because it is now 1.33 a.m. Uh, no protect. This would make a great tattoo. 
right on the lower back. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Comment out. No protection. Beautiful. Uh, so where do I put this thing? In front of it or the line above it? Potential infinite loop on line 7. Okay. To disable the loop, right? No protection as the first line. Oh, is the first line up here. Oh, oh, bad Steven. Bad Steven. Copy. So you start with it. Maybe this would be a better, better as a face tattoo. Instead of a lower back tattoo. If we're putting it up at the head. Copy. What the deuce? Uh, why doesn't it not let me copy that? I guess we just have to type it in manually. Slash, slash, space. No. Pro. Tact. Good. Good. Let's do it. Uh, also, let's copy all of this noise. Copy. Yeah. Run it. Nothing. It's still thinking. Maybe breaking into that next dimension is where it's really struggling. It seems like it would work. I'm fine either way, whether it does or doesn't like it. Seems like they're pissed. Could be super loopy, in their opinion. Fair enough. Hey, look at that. Page became unresponsive. Oh, you guys can't see. Uh, what's it called? Super kill. Aw, snap. Yeah. Love it. Love it. What are we looking for? Free code camp? So close. Wonder why they didn't like it. <clears throat> Let's do this. Well, maybe we just set up two two loopy things. Getting getting loopy. Chunky stuff. Chunky money. So our issue seems to be maybe it's not the no protection thing. Something about this smells bad, and I think it's me. Ah, Matt Gaming. Okay. How is that an infinite loop? What? Okay. It stops when I... It stops when I is less than. So I should stop I when it's greater than? Is that my issue? We'll try that. Okay. Okay. Clearly there's more work that needs to be done on my end. Um... It stops when I is greater than array length, which it should happen in two loops, I think, because I plus 2 is 3. 3 is greater than 4, which is the dot length. Then 5 is greater than 4, so it stops. That should not be an infinite loop. WTF, oh wait, it is infinite. Oh, so the way I had it, less than, was infinite. But it should be when I is greater than. Oh god. Greater. Uh, so it was doing I plus size every time. So it goes 2, 2, 2, 2, and infinitely. No, 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 no. Okay. Mega bad. See? The problem's always Steven. Yeah. But now, what the deuce am I looking at from here? Run the test. Challenge dies. What's going down? Matt Gaming. No, no, no. J 
just a second. Okay, take your time. All good. In, in the hood. Don't mind me. This is the infinite power of Lugal. No, no, no. Don't just search for Chunky Monkey. At least put a little effort into it. Write a function that splits an array into group lengths. Uh, function that splits an array. Copy. And returns them as two-dimensional arrays. Ta-da! Boom! Write a function that splits an array, first argument, into the group length, second size. Okay, so this got a bunch of zero answers. So this dude was equally confused as I was. Something about chunk and such. Sure to turn chunked arrays, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, beautiful. I get that it works for most examples, but when there are more than two chunks, it switches the order, and I'm not sure why. Fascinating. So, they've got their for loop, i equals 0, less than or equal to array length, oh, minus size. Hmm, that's weird plus equal size. Now again, they were super confused, so I don't know if I should trust them, but this one's got nine answers. Another version, array size. Hey, look at that. They've got a result. Oh, it's a wow loop. Oh, I wouldn't have figured that out in a thousand years. Fascinating. Uh, Matt Gaming. I equal, okay, so wait, hold on, what's going on? Oh, we got, it's plus equals, so it's implementing the plus equals stuff. Let's try that. Let's try the plus equals I plus equals and run test. Maybe we should change it back. It may implode on us, but we can live with those. We can live with that. It's going to implode on us. Oh, look at that. There is no spoon. We we live by the there is no spoon mantra. You know? That's, there's no spoon in here. That's for sure. We've proven that after 218 days. So fascinating. Wow, Matt, you landed the plane. That is impressive. Okay, so, from the top, and let me also read through your comments, uh, that's what I want to do, i equals i plus size, it's i plus equals size, we got it, everything in your code is correct, just change it, no, 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 you're correct, it's just i plus equals size, okay, now I understand how it works, the first loop always starts with variable equals zero, so it will be zero, and zero plus size, which is two, plus equals size two, okay, so, we've got our function, chunk array in groups array is what we're receiving all the noise then the size of the groups they want so for two they want two bits in their array followed by twos and twos and twos or three pieces three pieces in their subarray and another three in that and so on and so forth and if it's larger than what they have it simply returns what's left over right beautiful so we've set up our empty subarray to push our subarrays into for variable i starting at zero. It's going to go through the length of the array in i plus equals size, which continues to update 
zero to two, two to four, blah, 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 and so forth. So everything that it gets sliced up by starts at i relative to the for loop, and then i plus size again, and so on and so forth. All of that noise happens, gets cut up nicely, pushed into our subarray, and then we return it. Ta-da! Balance has been restored to the universe once again. All thanks to Matt Gaming. Beat dee 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 dee. Huzzah! Rejoice in the glory of Matthew and his guidance. There is no spoon. Submit and go forth. All right, we're definitely calling it quits for day 218, but at least we made it that much further through the hellish basic algorithm scripting section here at Free Code Camp. Good times. Let's go ahead and close out of this. Thank you again to... We had... Well, thank you again to everyone and every... Thank you again to anyone and everyone who may have stopped by to view the stream today, especially those who help assisted... Help assist... God, we can't speak at all. What time is it? One forty. Thought, well, 144 and 31 seconds, 32 a.m. in the morning, everything hurts, and we can't think or read. Brutal. Uh, today, assisting us for the first challenge, we had Topher Gates, as usual. Thank you, Topher. And then for the second battle, towards the end of the second battle, mainly for the third challenge here, we had Matt Gaming assisting us. Uh, we also had Test Limit stop by. And to anyone else who stumbled into the stream, thank you very much. Any and all views are greatly, greatly appreciated. We've got Slasher Flick on the horizon for tomorrow and potentially Code Wars. That's up in the air. Let's move to our profile. 242 items down here at Free Code Camp. Good, good times. All right, uh, Matt Gaming, understand how it works? Oh, yeah, definitely. Again, once you claw through a problem like that for so long, especially when they're still basic ones, it definitely helps. That's why I don't mind taking so long to figure out the problems because it just hammers in the concepts. Although, oddly enough, we keep going over similar ones, but they keep changing the problems just slightly where, of course, I'm confused every single time. So it hurts every day, but we keep coming back for more. Uh, one more. Oh, so close. We we already went down the one more rabbit hole. Uh, when are you streaming tomorrow, by the way? Usually minutes before midnight. So uh, 1.46 a.m. now. We usually start the stream 11.55-ish, 11.57 p.m., just before midnight, Pacific Standard Time. I'm here in California, West Coast, Pacific Time, U.S. So yeah, good, good times, just before midnight. It's kind of like Cinderella every night of the stream. Not the best analogy, but pretty damn accurate. Uh, so yeah, good, good times. Way cool. Mac Gaming, sounds good. Have a good night. Read up on methods. Will do. String and array methods, of course. Of course. All essential things to survive here in the world of programming. Well, let's jump over to OBS. Adventure continues tomorrow with a day 219 of the year of streaming and learning code. But in the meantime, we are stopping the stream. Are you sure you want to stop the stream? Hell yeah. Kill it.